Yes. All right. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Well-Centered Woman podcast. I am absolutely delighted to have this conversation with Miana DK, who is a certified professional trainer, a transformation specialist, and a certified group instructor, the mom of three very beautiful daughters, and so much more. And I'm just thrilled to have her on here. So good to see you, Miana. Hello, hello. I'm honored to be here. Absolutely. So how have you been doing and how have things been going? I'm going to ask you some questions and we're going to get into this conversation, but how are you? Girl, I am here. I'm making it. I am pressing forward and I am look, looking forward to the future. I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm sitting yeah. here hopeful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, as we, um, as I was researching and kind of checking you out a little more after having, you know, known you and talked to you so long on the Faith Driven Business Leaders Clubhouse Room. But I'm like, let me just kind of go through to get ready for the interview. And I saw that link, which I had seen it before. You know, I've seen your link before, but now I'm being very intentional. Going to your IG profile link. And you had two statements on that link page, your Beacon AI page, right? That really, really stood out to me on so okay. many levels. So the first one, empowering differently able bodies. Can you school our listeners? And this is your segue into your journey, your testimony. Can you school our listeners on what you mean? What is the Miana definition of a differently abled body? Uh, it is very simple. When you look on a fitness flyer or a commercial, mm -hmm. anybody that you don't see is differently able-bodied. So if you mm -hmm. are super plus size, if you are our senior community, if you are a part of our pregnant community, if you are a part of our community that has mobility issues, meaning bad hips, bad knees, and your shoulder maybe don't get above right here, Anybody that you don't see represented in the fitness industry, those are my people. We go together. Mm, That's how that works. Those Literally, are your I, people. They're my people. I want to let them know that just because you don't see anything like you represented, it doesn't mean that we're not here for you. It doesn't mean that you don't have a place. You do belong. So mm. I just provide that space for everyone to belong. I love that. I love that. Now, tell me more in That's terms good. of that in terms of your own journey, because you had mentioned and you talk about it on your page, you know, about how you found yourself after the death of your husband in grief, but not really it. wanting to process the grief. Yes. You were at, tell us about that. You were at, you hit a high of 350 pounds, right? Yes. Uh, it was really over that, but that is just the number that I remember seeing, mm. you know, last after I had started already doing the work, I didn't start checking the scale until I was underway because I knew if I checked the scale in the beginning, I was going to quit. So I waited until I had developed the pattern and a rhythm. Then I decided to check the scale. And so, yeah, so I needed something to be able to say where I was in the beginning type thing, you know. Um, but by the time I finished, you know, I had I lost over a hundred pounds. Um, I just, yeah, yeah. I was about three fifty. I was about three fifty. It was, it was a tough journey. It was a tough journey because I realized very, very quickly that weight loss wasn't physical. Mm, break that down. Break it down. Uh, weight loss is a combination of the of choices that are not physical and the things you say to yourself when nobody's looking, that is weight loss. Mm, that's when it. When you look in the mirror, if the first thing that you say is something negative, chances are you're not gonna lose weight. Physical health is a symptom of self-love. So once I started feeling good about myself as a woman, um, as a person, as a woman, it was so easy for me to make the decision to work out. I love it was that. the last part. It showed up physically, the work that I was doing on myself emotionally. 
And it really wasn't even mentally because mentally you don't have to tell a plus size person that she's fat or he's fat. They know, they don't need you to tell them, right? And so telling them more than once is not gonna make them lose weight. Otherwise 70% of our country wouldn't be overweight. It is mental health. It shows up. You are a direct reflection of how you feel about yourself physically. It doesn't always show up like in um, like being obese. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're skinny, but you're still unhealthy. That is a direct reflection of how you feel about yourself. I realized that when I could change how I feel about myself, I could change the outcome of my body. That's right. That's right? So good. So good. My husband passing put me in a situation where I thought I was okay. My children were very young. Uh, my youngest was 19 months when he passed. Hmm. And my oldest was six. And then I had a five-year-old. So um, I had gotten some initial grief counseling and I thought I was okay. Um, started working with Primerica, loved it, was making a lot of money. Like, oh my God, I'm helping families. This is amazing. And then I woke up at the height of that and did not want to get out of bed. I didn't want to take my kids to school. I didn't want to get them dressed. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to do yes. any of the things. And how, when I thought that I went through grief counseling? Well, it doesn't get everything. It's an ongoing thing. Hmm. I did it one time. I thought I was cool. Come on now. But Come on. Was, now. <laughs> that's it right there. We do it one time and think that's enough. And it caught up with you. A black woman, we don't even <laughs> really believe in, well, traditionally, we did not in the past. Black people didn't really go to therapy and do all they want to talk to their pastor or they took it to the Lord in prayer, not really knowing, like, well, knowing, but not understanding. Like God made those therapists for a reason, you know? Amen. Anywho, That's I went to right. therapy one time, thought I was okay, then until I wasn't. And my weight had ballooned up, you know? And I just was in this state of, well, what do I do now? Who am I outside of him? We got married when I was 19. We started dating when I was a, a little bit before I turned 18, but we had known each other since uh, my first day of high school. It's very wow. interesting. Um, Childhood sweethearts. In, yeah. Yes. That's what it I walked like. into, the, into the choir room um, at Crenshaw High School, Cougars, class of 98, just in case anyone was wondering. Okay. So I walked into Crenshaw High School, right? The choir room. And um, I seen this guy playing at the piano and singing and he had this really nice smile bright smile and I looked and I was like I'm gonna marry him and my friend standing next to me was like do you know who that is I was like I've never seen him before I don't know but I know I'm gonna marry him that was in the ninth grade first day of school he could not stand me he would he he was a senior that year he graduated but he would come back and go on tour with the choir we would go to France every summer and sing and so after I graduated from high school, we went on a tour. And I guess that year I must have looked a little different. He saw me a little different, right? <laughs> and, uh, and it's been history ever since. I love that story. I love so that. So 10 years later, when he passed away, who am oh. I outside of him now? It, you never saw me without him, him without us, us without our children. Yeah. We pastored a church for seven years, we pastored. Mm. labor of love it was amazing I learned all of the the lessons were amazing the everything that I learned was amazing he was amazing so now that he's gone now what now what and so it's like you having to pick up the pieces of your life and you've gained weight in that process and so your whole journey has been sounds like to me like a journey back home to yourself like a journey to find Miana again is what it sounds like and, you know, in the process, and I'm gonna go back to this because you, you made another statement that I love. This is something that I just really had to chew on. You <laughs> said another thing. You know what I'm talking about? Being loud and taking up space. It's about being, you empowering um, differently abled bodies. And then when you've gone through trauma, 
when you've gone through grief, when you've been so depressed, you couldn't get out of bed to take care of your babies. You lost the love of your life, your childhood sweetheart. And you're, you, you know, now you're overweight and you got this stuff, this going on to get to the point where you're saying now I'm giving myself permission to be loud and to take up space. So, and this is hard because a lot of women shrink back and hide when their self-esteem has, has been compromised, especially when it comes to body image, size, yes. shape, yes. and weight. Yes. So given the backdrop of all you've gone through, can you unpack and share with the listeners this whole concept of giving yourself permission to be loud, to take up, play, to take up space, and mm-hmm. where you are in that now? Because see, now you're not the same Miana that you were back then when you lost no. the weight, you're an entrepreneur. You got a whole fitness fitness brand. Let's not even let. Yeah. Okay. So being yeah. loud and taking up space in the context of where you are now. Well, you- okay. Let's start with how fat phobia is ingrained in our society. Everybody, Say that again. Fat, fat phobia oh my is God. ingrained in our society. Even people who are not fat have fat phobia internalized. I'm going to tell you why. Because Nobody can be satisfied unless they lose that last 15 pounds. Everybody want to lose that last 10. Everybody feel like if they could just go down one more dress size, they would be all right. Everybody feel like if they- I'm raising my hand. Those of y'all that are listening, I'm raising my hand. I could lose another 15. You telling the truth. That's fat phobia, right? Because society tells us that we have to be this size or that size, right? And so- When you are overweight, I I was a fat baby. I was a fat kid, right? Um, You are taught to show up a certain way in society. You are taught subconsciously to do everything you can to take up less space, to shrink yourself for other people's satisfaction. You ever see, I'm going to give you some like insight on some fat girl. I I will, I won't cut, I won't cuss on your part. So some fat girl stuff, right? You ever see a girl that sits down and can't stop pulling her shirt away from her body? She can't stop. She can't stop or he can't stop doing this. That's fat folk stuff, right? Or Mm -hmm. making noises that sound light instead of noises that you would normally make. I know this is going to sound crazy, but instead of saying, they'll be like, I know that that sounds weird, but just pay attention mm. next time in certain spaces. You wouldn't know because it's not your, it's not your 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 lifestyle, and it's I think that's great that you don't know that. But we are taught to do things to take attention away from the mass of our bodies, right? Wow. That is how we grow up. We grow up feeling like we have to be quiet, shrink, because otherwise people don't know how fat you are. Right. So Mm -hmm. as an adult, I found that now this is my second go round. I lost 108 pounds. And then in 2018, there was a heart attack and a tumor and a partial hysterectomy. And I found 59 of those pounds. So now I'm on this phase of losing weight again. It's no problem. No problem. Um, I'm no longer in a space where I am depressed about that and self-conscious about that. I used to be, I used to, a couple of months ago even, maybe six, seven weeks ago, I looked at myself in the mirror and was like, I don't wanna post no throwback pictures because now my throwback, my throwback pictures, I'm 55 pounds smaller. So now they look a little bit different. So that fat phobia mm. that, I, that I help people try to overcome every day came right back to me. And I was forced to have to practice what I preach. Come on now. So, Come on now, you ooh. So now, when I go out in public, I, I'm taking up space. Hey, how's everybody doing today? I'm not going to wave and do this because I don't want to attract attention to myself. No, I have a bubbly personality. It's who I am. Hey, how's everybody doing? You good? What's going on, sis? I don't got to know you. You still sis, bro, whatever. And I'm not going to find the chair that's away from everybody else's. That's another thing that fat people do. They find the chair that's not next to everybody else's because they don't want to make people uncomfortable. 
Come on now. I'm sitting right next to whoever that is right there. I might sit between those two people because now I understand that my job is not to people please. My job is to be confident in who I am, knowing that I'm working on myself. It's I love it. Self-acceptance. It's not self-acceptance, not yeah. shrinking back, giving yeah. yourself permission to show mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. I saw a phrase on Facebook today, right before mm -hmm. our interview. Mm -hmm. The glow up is in the show up. The glow up is it's in the show up. up. Come it's on. in the show up now. No, now see, you're showing up. And see, I believe yeah. that too. Let yourself be heard. Let yourself be seen. Be be who you are and take up space. You can't That's shrink crazy. back. Now let's bring this back to our faith. How are you going to show up fully as a woman of God and run a business and build a brand and you up there shrinking in the corner and trying to get on the back seat, the last row, uh, hide, be quiet, how you gonna do that? You're gonna have to say that again because somebody didn't hear you. I forgot I what I said that fast. Say it like, for me. <laughs> how how you gonna be a woman of God and you shrinking yourself in the corner of the room for somebody else's mm -hmm. what, benefit? You don't know who in that room needs to hear what you got to say. You don't oh, know man. who in that room was sent to that place at that time just to hear maybe two sentences that you got to say that could change their life. But and instead of walking in that boldness, mm -hmm. you shrinking because you don't want people to realize you fat. Come on, man. You got to be kidding me. It's the things that we can see, right? People are self-conscious about the, the things that people can see about them. Let, let's, let's go church, right? Mm -hmm. Church really only focus on the sins they can see, right? We know we can focus on the pregnant mom that's not married, we can, we can preach about that. We can preach about the homosexual that, that is flamboyant or the homosexual woman that's masculine. We can preach about the meth dealer, the drug user, the mm -hmm. one that have physical attributes of whatever it is that they dealing with in life. That's what we preach on. But we don't never touch on the other stuff. And the other stuff is what's killing us. That is the so true. But, and see, you don't have to have fat phobia to be shrinking. I've had, if you want, I, I could qualify. I've shrunk and hid in corners and not use my mouth and not use my voice and people please. So let's Man. not get it twisted. Those Man. of you that are listening, you, it may be some plus size, differently abled women that are going to listen to this podcast, but it's going to be a lot of women that are not. And, and I don't want you're to still standing about shrinking. It's we still st you. It's still you, sis. It may not be fat phobia, but you may you may have internalized misogyny or massage noir, and that's how that's running your life. That's mm. that's not going to help either. You may have internalized patriarchy that you can't get over, and it's stopping you from stepping out and doing what God called you to do because you're a woman. Like mm. we don't forwardly say these things. But we know that depend on how we are raised, internalized patriarchy is there and it stops women from achieving the things that God would have called them to do because women shouldn't do this or women can't do that. That's not true, but it's what we believe and we shrink, especially in the presence of men, certain men mm -hmm. who are not even qualified to like shine our shoes. Come on but because now. Because of internalized patriarchy, we shrink ourselves when they should be learning from us. In some cases, I'm not saying all cases, but you know what I'm saying. That's right. It's you, sis. Yes, yes. We're we're shrinking back from men that are that are not even worthy of our respect or love. Sometimes we give our hearts to an unworthy man because we're not respecting. That's a whole different podcast oh <laughs> altogether. <laughs> Uh, but I love, I love this whole discussion. And another thing that I love that you do, that you do so consistently and so well, every single last post, you know what I'm talking about? Every post that you do, every video that you make, you always say, life is about progress, not perfection. Be gentle with yourself. Life is about progress, not perfection. Be gentle with yourself.
And I'm the first person that will raise my hand. I have been hard on myself. Can you please go into this? Because you're saying that for a reason. So my question is, did you start off doing this as a reminder for you to not be hard on yourself? And why do you think we as women are so hard on ourselves? And I'm talking for especially those of us that are faith-based women. We believe in God. We're believers. We're out here trying to make a difference. We're trying to lead do good in our home, take care of our bodies. We trying to look cute and keep ourselves together and be the good Christian woman and all of this stuff. And we got, it's just everything, but we hard on, we slip, it's mess society. up and make mistakes. Tell me about this. It's our society that we live in. Our society teaches us that we should already have it when we, when we get the idea. And especially if we are saved, we think that that extra access to Christ means that maybe we shouldn't even have to work as hard as the next person because favor ain't fair. Like, no, sis. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then, and then when we don't get it right away, we're hard on ourselves. We feel like failures because we hmm. didn't do something right away. I am learning that there is so much information out there that we haven't been exposed to just yet that to assume that we have all the information and just didn't do it right is, is not fruitful for us. Like mm -hmm. it's a process. We are not gentle with ourselves because we are not really, really into processes and, and systems. Like do how many people have a, a routine that they, that they write out every day and go by? Because that kind of discipline is what you need as a business owner. Mm -hmm. We don't have all of the disciplines that we need to complete certain things that we want for our lives, but we still want the stuff done. Mm -hmm. And then we down ourselves when it's not done, but we don't even know, really, we haven't done all to stand. We be standing there for before we've done all to stand. Ooh, say that again. <laughs> we need be standing there for before we've done all to stand. And then we're hard on ourselves when we fall. Not knowing or not realizing that you cannot go from Z to A because that's not how it works. Also, a lot of us are technicians in a thing that decide to start a business. We are really good at what we do. So we decide we're going to start a business. We don't know business. We know the thing that we do. Mm -hmm. So we think that we can be a business owner because we're a good technician. But to be a business owner, you have to be good at that one technique that you're good at, plus 43 other things over here that you never knew that you had to learn in order for the world can, to see this one thing that you're good at. Mm, that's, yep. So true. And then we don't want to learn the 43 other things. Hello, Miana. Hello, lights. <laughs> Are you preaching to yourself? We don't want to then... learn the 43 things. We want to get rich <laughs> off the one technique that we know. I know how to get women to believe in themselves and, and also see them better. I see them better than they see themselves. And sometimes that's all you need. It's for somebody to see you better than you see yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I know I can do that for women. That is not all it takes to run a business, though. Exactly. Exactly. And then when we drop the ball on the 43 things, then we want to beat ourselves over the head. But you got to acknowledge that you didn't even know the 43 things existed. And we, yeah, yeah. So can you give yourself grace? Because you didn't know those 43 things existed. The problem. Progress is realizing, oh, there are 43 things that I got to learn how to do in, in addition to this. Mm -hmm. That's the progress. Being gentle is giving yourself time to learn the 43 things. Yeah. And having grace because also what that means is possibly they can't see that technique until those 43 things are learned. Mm -hmm. But it's what you said you wanted. You said you wanted a business. It's not God's fault that you didn't understand what that meant, what you meant when you said it. You just told him you wanted a business. He gave you one. Now you got to keep it up. 
And be gentle with yourself. <laughs> and be you're... gentle with yourself. And hold on, drink water, exercise, be show up as the best version of yourself as a woman. If mm-hmm. you have a partner, be a good partner. If you have kids, be a good kid. I mean, be a good parent. And if and you still, have parents, be a good kid. And still be gentle because you're still going to make mistakes. You're now, still so you going understand to understand why you got to be gentle. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, being hard on yourself is self defeating. If I'm hard on myself, how's beating myself up going to help me do better? Right. And, and if you're doing all of that, if you if you're if you're not being gentle on yourself, knowing you got all of that going, how you think you're going to lose weight? I can't even work with you because you don't even realize that you got to be gentle with yourself if you're going to lose weight. That's so good, girl. Come it's on complicated. now. It's complicated. It's complicated. So yeah, let's listen. Self love, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, in thinking about this, let's let's segue into your thickness fitness brand. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So we talk about emotions here on the Well Centered Woman podcast, and I want to know what triggers in your emotions like from the past that came up or that had to be dealt with when you stepped out to launch this brand? What kind of emotional highs and lows and getting in your feelings? And how did you partner with the Holy Spirit? You know, where did you get triggered and your little moments here where you kind of got a little stuck and in your feelings? And how did you partner with the Holy Spirit in building fitness fitness in those moments? First of all, I cry every day. Let's just put that out there. I mean, emotional woman, I cry every day. I do. <laughs> For some reason or another. Uh, okay. Um, imposter wow. syndrome. Mm. It was my biggest thing. What I do understand is I'm a certified personal trainer and also plus size. That is an oxymoron in the fitness industry. Okay. I do not have the look of the average trainer. I do not want to reach the average fitness audience is very niche. Um, Mm -hmm. The the look of walking in the gym with other trainers whose bodies don't look like mine. That is, that was something that I had to work very, very hard to, I don't even know if I'm over it, but I am very kind to myself in those situations. So imposter syndrome, yeah, I did all of the work but do I really deserve to be here? Cause I don't look like them. Um, hmm. Abandonment issues, v- very weird. But when we go into business, we just expect our friends to be there. We just expect them to support us. We just expect them to show up. We just expect them. Yeah. Well, for me, I found myself discouraged when my friends didn't show up to my workouts or when my friends didn't share my, my posts or like, I remember one time I made a huge investment into, into shirts, apparel, clothing, and stuff like that. I don't know how many hundreds of dollars I gave out in shirts, just hoping they was going to take a picture with it on, post it on social media and tag me. Less than 5% of the people that I gave shirts to actually did that. And it was only after I kind of just like got on their nerves a little bit, you know, and some of my friends, I felt like, well, you kind of need to be at this thing. Like, I don't understand (laughs) why you, you know, however, it took someone to school me, like, let your friends be your friends. Don't have any expectations on them because you you can't expect them to do something for you because you would do it for them. That's not how life works. Um, Let your friends support you in a way that they are comfortable supporting you in and work on building your audience that is not your friends. Don't expect anything from them that they were not giving you before you started this business because that's unfair to your friendship to have these expectations on them that they didn't ask you to put on them. If they want to come to your workout, they will. 
But again, you are even talking about how working out and losing weight is mental before physical. Are your friends in a position where they're ready to make that kind of life change? And oh I just have to sit back like. Okay. Oh. That makes sense, right? And I love that. Every, that is such wisdom. And I had to learn that too, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm in a different space, but it's like, my book is not for everybody. And in the beginning, people will support and may buy your book, but it's a target audience. My friends and my family may not necessarily be my target audience. They, they may not need what I have, right? And they, if they're they, buying they, it, they're buying they it out of the goodness of their heart to support, right. but do they really need it? I need to focus on the people that are assigned to my voice and not just them because the, the target audience, the people that God has assigned for us are not going to be the friends and family. And, you know, I know very well that feeling, you know, they didn't like my post. They didn't share my post. You know, it, yeah, <laughs> you can get in your feelings quick with that. And that's why yeah. we have to build our own. You have to build it for the people that are assigned to you and from elevate your day, voice. From that day, I never asked anything of a friend of mine concerning my business ever again. Like, and I have never felt better about that decision. Like, let just let people do that when they want to do that, you know? Yeah. Um, also, another thing I was just thinking about chores, though, and I don't know this to be true or whatever, but your particular book are for, is for women who really want to stop giving them a chance, who really want to move on and who really, really want to do something different. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. if, if your friends and family know all they're going to do is keep running back to him anyway, they, not, they don't want to be reminded by reading your book of all of the bad decisions that they're making. That's because right. they are willingly making those decisions. Why? Because all the information that they need to get it right is at their fingertips. It's their sister. It's their homegirl. It's their auntie. That's Tanika. I know I can go to her and get any pearls of wisdom that I'm looking for if I really want to do this for real, for real. They ain't coming to you because they're not ready to make those kind of changes. So that's another reason. And I had to come to that conclusion as well. Like, don't nobody want to be reminded of the thing that they know that they got to do, but they just not really ready to do it. And then I just try to have grace because I remember when I wasn't ready. Remember when I was still sitting on the couch? I remember when, just speaking to your book, I remember when I was giving that person another chance and another chance and another chance. Like, you understand what I mean? Until I decided. Come on now. Nah, I'm not going to do no another chance. I'm going to get out of that dead end relationship I'm now. About good now. I'm yeah. probably not going to go back this time because. Mm -hmm. and, and it really was consistently hearing that it's okay. It's, so it's okay. okay. You're going to be okay. It's okay. And it's about still, even in that place, being gentle with them because they're not ready. If, and I had to learn that my book, the first book, Get Out of That Dead End Relationship. Now, if you've picked up that book to buy it, that means you about ready. You already got your foot halfway out the door. That's because the red flags, flags is wagging, wagging in your face and you're oh, yeah. hurting and oh, you're yeah. ready. So if a woman picks up my book, she ready. Her foot is all about all the way slid now out the door. But if a woman's not ready, she's not really going to be interested in my book. Let me tell you something about you. <laughs> it's Tanika's voice, y'all. I know y'all know because y'all be listening to her. It is oh the goodness. voice. It is the grace. Like you carry yourself with such like grace. That's the best word I can come up with when I hear you talk. Your voice is extremely soothing. It's extremely comforting. Like it lets you know, like, no, sis, no, you really, it's really gonna be okay. Like, it's just something about when you talk. Like, and you're also very, and I know I used this word earlier, so don't feel no way about this, polished, like, but in a good way. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't feel polished at all. But you, <laughs> You deliver that way. Like you, yeah, you can't get me to believe that you don't believe it when you talk, which is what we want, which means yeah. that thing is deep down on the inside of you. You believe what you say. You're passionate 
about everything that you do and the way that you go up for women's healing after these relationships is just so commendable because like we don't never really talk about healing after getting out of a relationship we talk about moving on mm. all our lives what we hear the best way to get over that 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 is to get under that that you know what i'm saying like we've been hearing that our whole lives and it is how we learn to cope with our yeah. feelings so here you come saying whoa 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 i know you've been taught x y and z your whole <laughs> life but let me tell you something different and you force people to unlearn what they have learned about that kind of thing and relearn something new that is a more excellent way of handling their own hearts. And I think that that is so commendable. Like it is oh, so needed. Thank you. Thank People you, Miana. Love it. Self-love is mm. severely lacking in, in, in our society. It most certainly is. And thank you so much for your kind words and everything. I, I sure do appreciate you and what you said. I mean, I and, mean. you know, you're telling me I'm graceful and got this voice. And I, honey, I feel like a country bumpkin half the time. Most <laughs> half the time but you're so you're so true about the self-love thing and I think it's a process and when you go through trauma and when you take hits I think our self-esteem and confidence as women ebbs and flows depending on what season we're in I mean you have to have a baseline built up but when you go mm -hmm. through blows and when you go through hits sometimes it just takes sometimes it'll dip and dab you know you go through some hell you're going to take a hit. And so do we have the tools and do we have the language to rebuild that when it comes to relationships, when it comes to our weight? You know, like, for instance, this whole thing when I turned 50 years old and look around, it was last year when I first got on Clubhouse, end of 20, early 2021, mm -hmm. I get on the scale. I'm like, girl, bye. You're about 20 pounds over. What happened to you, boo? It was all the stress. It was just coming, just everything. I ended in, in engagement at in end of 2020. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. I look around and I don't pick, you know, it's just like, ooh, girl. And so I felt hits. So and it's a real gotta, place. But think about what you just said. It was a bunch of things that you were going through. It just showed up on the scale. I'm like, so, like but that is that? why you want to be gentle because it lets you know that the weight is not the problem, it's the symptom. Once you lose whatever weight you got going on right here, the stress, the you know, mm -hmm. the hurt, you know, whatever it took that whatever that took to end that relationship or that engagement, that is weight. And <laughs> you understand what I mean? And yeah. when you begin to release that weight then it'll show up physically. So I, I just hate when people really be downing themselves for where they are when really it's not the weight you need to down, it's whatever led to it. Mm -hmm. you know? Come on now, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's emotional like, weight. It's yeah. emotional weight. Because mm -hmm. that, that was just a symptom, the physical weight. So like, for instance, let's say a young lady comes to me and she wants to, she wants to work with me, right? My first question is gonna be, so what made you schedule the appointment? right? Mm -hmm. why, why, why do you want to lose weight? If the first thing she tell me is health reasons, I'm going I'm to let her finish that sentence. And I'll be like, all right, sis. <laughs> sis, you can't BS me because I've been here. How long you had those uh, health issues? Probably years. If it's been years, that's not the reason why you reaching out to me today. You live with it this whole time. What's the real reason? You want a different caliber of partner? You tired of people talking mess about how you look? You tired of feeling self-conscious when you walk in a room full of people and you're the biggest one? Them the kind of answers I need. Because All those right. are the only answers that are going to make you successful. Yes. Get you got to be real with yourself. Come on you, now. You, want, you, you tired of the men that's been attracted to you? You feel like you, you deserve something more? Okay, I can work with that. That will make you successful if you are just honest. Like you have to operate from a basis of truth. We don't cannot, tell me about yes. that other stuff. Don't, don't tell me nothing about high blood pressure, diabetes. I don't care 
anything about that because you haven't cared about it all of these years. I want to know why you really hear. That's so good. I don't care what the world tells you that you're supposed to say to me. Don't say none of that. I don't care how we think fat people, obese, uh, you know, people get offended when you say fat. Plus size people have a way that they feel like they have to show up in the world. They have the answers they feel like they should be saying. Mm. And then they have the answers that are for real. The answers that they should be saying is that, oh, I just need to get healthy. I need to drink more water. I need to, you know, I just, I want to live until I'm 80. Like, girl, (laughs) girl, if you don't take these societal norm kind of answers out of here, like you want to live to 80, how? Do you want to be happy living to 80? Or do you want to live to 80 the way the society tells you that you need to? Like, let's get real. And then I spent like three weeks just talking to the person before I even write out a workout plan. Because like, what if you don't like Mm -hmm, mm sit-ups? I won't know that if I don't talk to you. Also, how do you show up in your everyday life right now? Do you keep your word with your friends? Like if you make plans with your friends for Sunday at seven, do you cancel at 12? Do you cancel at five or do you just show up? What what about just not showing up? Because all of those things will dictate if you are successful with me or not. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to get to learn you. Is everything your fault or is everything somebody else's fault? Because that's going to affect how you work with me. Come on now, it's, it's, you got to operate from a basis of truth. You need to know if that person's really going to be gut level honest about where they are. And number two, if they're going to show up for themselves, because if they won't show up in other places, they're not going to show up with you. That is, is that is I'm so different. good. This That's, is why I'm different. This yeah. is why I know I'm different because I am invested in lifestyle change. Mm. I'm not invested in a person that want to lose 10 or 20 pounds. I, I do know people that you can, that I can refer you to if you just want to lose 10 or 20 pounds, but I want to focus on people who want to change their lives. Sometimes yeah. people don't want to lose weight. It's behavioral. They want to stop drinking sodas. Okay. It might take you two years to stop drinking sodas. Are you willing to invest that time? Cause you've been drinking sodas for 40 years. So if it take you two years to stop, are you okay with that? If you are, <laughs> I can work with you. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. So I get it. I get it. And so in this whole thickness fitness, we could go on the name. I may ask you about this, but I wanted to know just in building this and in this whole discussion, knowing what you know now mm-hmm. from building a business, like that whole conversation about I'm, I'm good at this. I'm a technician and helping you lose weight. I know how to do seated workouts. I know extras. I know all of this stuff. But now I got these 43 things over here that I needed to learn to run a whole new brand, to found a whole new brand. Is there anything you would have done differently over the past? Like from the time you started to now, knowing what you know now, you've been in the grind, the faith driven business leaders club, learning stuff, doing stuff. You've been out here, tick tocking. You've been mm-hmm. just busy. What would you do um, differently in your business? Yeah, I'm playing catch up because there were some things I should have done differently. Um, I would have taken the time to at least start on the 43 things before uh, launching <laughs> out into the deep, like before incorporating my LLC, before, before I did those things because I was excited about how great of a technician I was, I would have invested some time in learning how to be an entrepreneur. I would have invested time on in learning how to be a manager as well. Not one that micromanages, but one that empowers. I would have learned how to, I would have learned the difference between those three people, between the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician. Because all three of those people live inside of me. All three of those people live inside of us, right? However, we are normally very, very good at one but not very good at the other two, but it takes all three to make a business run. So, oh, that's so I good. Have, yeah, I would have spent time on the entrepreneurial and the managerial part first um, to learn a little bit more of the technical stuff so that I, I would not have felt so overwhelmed because 
I remember saying to Edgar one time, I feel so frustrated because why do I have to learn how to be a website designer just to teach people how to lose weight? I, I said that and I'll never forget saying that to him. And he laughed, he kind of chuckled a little and he was like, it's all a part of the process. He was like, I don't know what to say, except for it's all a part of the process. And as I continue to go along and trudge along, being frustrated, crying every day, because I have to learn something new that I was not used to before, um, <laughs> being frustrated with myself because I can't necessarily get it right away. You had to be gentle on yourself. Uh, yeah, hello. Um, <laughs> I, I did struggle with that with myself the most, giving myself the same grace that I would give someone else. Um, it is a lot tougher to do it for yourself, you know? Um, so yeah, I remember him saying that to me and, and he was right. You have to, the fundamentals are so very important. We assume that because we have an LLC that we know some of those basic things and we don't, we just know how to get an LLC. We know how to either call legal zoom or go down to the state and pay your fees and boom, now you're incorporated. Now what? Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole, it's a whole big thing. Guess what? Technicians yeah. don't care about that. Technicians know how to do the work, but they don't That's know how to know run how the to business, do. but we got to learn how to run the business. And I love how you broke down the three hats. I'm a technician. I'm a manager. And what was the other one? The entrepreneur, entrepreneur. the owner, the founder. You need, you need the, you need the vision, right? You mm -hmm. need the visionary. You need the technicians going to read it, run with it. Right. Mm -hmm. The entrepreneur writes the vision, makes it play. So that they they can read it and run with it. That's the technician is gonna do. But the manager facilitates the vision between the entrepreneur and the technician. Yeah, and you gotta have the Holy Spirit up in there in the midst. The whole the whole thing, right? So I was just rocking with the Holy Spirit and being a technician, and thought that was enough to then call myself an entrepreneur. No, it's not. Wow, it's not mm, so good. You got you are right. And, yeah, and then I was good. also the person that's like, well, God, just give me all the dollars so I can pay the per to pay the people to do what I can't do. Because we always talk about, well, if you don't know how to do it, then you gotta have pay the somebody. dollars to pay somebody to do it. But you still gotta know what's going on in your business. Come on. Even now. If you pay somebody to do it, how are you gonna know if they're messing up or not? Exactly. That's so huge. That's so huge. That is so huge. And let me ask you this. So we're going to segue again. No problem. Because I'm trying to keep this, the, the time. No problem. And I'll, I got like two more questions. Just two. No problem. <laughs> if you could be remembered for one thing, what mm -hmm. would it be? How I make people feel. Wow. How I make them feel. Sharing. I want people to always say, I know what it feels like to not feel wanted, validated, accepted, needed. Uh, uh, I know how Val feels to feel abandoned. I know how it feels to feel all of those things, right? So I could, I could tell you, I could write a book on those things. I want to make it my mission to not make people feel any of those things. Mm -hmm. Period. I want people to glean from me that whatever it is that you want to do, like you really can. If you want to lose weight, you can. You have to lose it mentally first. Amen. Proper expectations. I want them to feel like because they ran into me or ran across me that they know they can do it. I don't want to change people's lives. I want people to feel empowered to change their own lives when they bump into me. See, people be asking for the wrong thing. I don't want people to feel like they was able to do something because of me, mm -hmm. because then I become the thing. No, God is the thing. You do it because you can. I just want to be proof that you can. Amen. Mm. 
Mm-mm-mm. My God. Now, if you could go back and give 18-year-old Miana DK some advice, what would you tell her? <laughs> okay. Hmm. Don't marry Luther yet. Date him, date him like a year longer. Still marry him. But figure out what your life is like first. Outside of him. You be a better partner for him because you have something that you're focused on too. As opposed to just helping, you know, a wife is a help me. Mm-hmm. So as opposed to just helping the man meet the vision that God gave him for his life, you can also help by meeting your own vision. Mm. And you can be more of a contributing factor to the overall success of the union. Also, there is no glass ceiling. There is no glass ceiling. I grew up feeling like, yeah, the sky is the limit because that's what they tell you on TV, but they don't tell you that there's a glass ceiling. So you can see the sky, you can see it, but that glass ceiling is there. So you can't quite, you're gonna always run into something that keeps you from achieving exactly what you wanna achieve because of your socioeconomic status. Maybe you're raised in poverty. Maybe your mom was not there. Maybe your mom was on drugs. Maybe you didn't come from the best. When you don't come from the best upbringing, when you're raised in poverty, you see a glass ceiling. If you see the sky at all. And so I would tell my 18 year old self, start reading books. There is no glass ceiling. Figure out how to get around it. You can do it. Because I could have saved myself 20 years. Oh, Jesus. This is a whole word. You done preached the whole word. Number one, you said, if you could go back and talk to 18-year-old Miana, you would have waited a, a little while before you married to find out who you were and to get your purpose and kind of get settled and rooted in who Miana is first before connecting yourself to a man and you didn't even have your own vision and really know who you are. That's what I'm hearing. That's yes. so good. That is profound. I, I concur. I, I, I did the same thing yes. and then divorced after 10 years of marriage. And then the second thing you said was read and to believe and to know that there is no glass ceiling. You can't puncture or get around that glass ceiling, but it's that internal work that's going to enable you to do that. My God. Read, read, listen to audiobooks. Read. Like I I have been, my daughter just went to prom and um I had to come up with copious amounts of money that I did not have. So Uber was gonna be my best friend. Some days I was driving 10 or 11 hours. I listened to books and anybody that got in the car listened to them books too. What you gonna tell me? I can't listen to an audio book in my own car? Exactly. So I listen to books. Books will grow you. They will force you to think outside of whatever your current status is. I am reading a book right now called The E-Myth. And the next, I'm gonna speak to somebody in, uh, on the business team to, um, see if I can get a couple of days. Cause that whole, that triune, you know, uh, the entrepreneur, the manager, the technician, that's something I picked up from that book. Yeah. And I believe that that would be amazing for us to talk about so we can identify which one we are right yeah. now. And then that'll give us an idea of where we need to go. But yeah, read books because they're going to help. Every book won't be a self-help book. Every book may not be on, you know, entrepreneurship mm-hmm. or whatever. You could just listen to some regular stuff too, but read though. Read, read. read your mind. I love it. I love it. And for those of you who not who do not 
who may not pick up on what she's talking about. She's talking about sharing in the Faith Driven Business Leaders Club on Clubhouse. In our business, we have our half hour business segment in that daily Clubhouse room. And so Miana is speaking to sharing some of this information in the business section of that Clubhouse room. So you may want to check them out on Clubhouse. Monday through Friday, baby. 8 a.m., right? All right. And so lastly, as you know, this is the Well-Centered Woman podcast, and centered means to be balanced, at peace, emotional and spiritual equilibrium. And so what is the number one daily practice that, that keeps you centered and sane, that keeps you centered and in your emotional and spiritual equilibrium? I know you cry every day because that's helpful. I do, yeah. But um, what else do you do as a professional, as a faith-driven businesswoman that keeps you really centered on a daily basis? And I know you go to the clubhouse room, so I know two things you got. <laughs> um, I really do try to spend just some moments in silence every single day. No phone, no TV. Um, and when I say TV, I don't really watch a lot of TV, but I do have YouTube on my TV. So there's always something, you know, playing in the background so none of that um I just try to be quiet that's something that I've only adopted maybe six months ago uh doesn't always work but I do notice on the 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 times when I'm really in my zone and I'm doing it every day I have better days so I wake up about four every morning um that's just when my body says to get up I don't even have to have an alarm now I'm waking up at the same time um before I get on my phone, I like to have a few minutes of just silence, like set my intentions in my mind for the day. What do I see myself doing after the clubhouse call? You know what I mean? Like, am I going to work out first and then shoot my videos or am I going to shoot my videos and then work out? What am I going to do in terms of doing something for my business? What does that look like today? Now, what I could get better in is pre-planning. I normally will plan in the morning, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that does not always work out well. I got to get better at um, planning a little further in advance. Yeah, um, yeah. But just having quiet time. Quiet time. Quiet, quiet time. So powerful. I call it my, your daily soul care practice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I love yeah, that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're doing a combination of things. You're doing the silence in the morning, just having that still moment with you and God in the morning is what it sounds like. You're also mm -hmm. getting your daily dose of inspiration. You're getting a word and you're also worshiping in that room every day. Yes. That's part of it. That's a huge part of it. And then of course you're planning and setting your intentions for the day. So you got, you're doing you're doing quite a bit here. And as we close this out, just let us know about any latest projects, your services, your offerings, what, how people can connect with you and what you have going on right now that you want to share and offer to people. This is your chance to talk about uh, thickness, fitness. Well, um, as we've been saying, thickness, fitness is definitely here for all differently able-bodied people. We, um, I offer chair workouts and right now I have a seated workout subscription where you pay $29 a month and you get 10 seated workouts. And of course, all of the replays on my website. Um, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching services. All of those uh, prices are on my website. I do offer behavioral coaching for those who may not be looking to lose weight, but may be looking to break some behaviors that are harmful or just not doing you any good. Um, I am on all the social platforms. I post one seated movement every day. Um, so far, since I started doing that, I have not had to duplicate a movement yet. I don't know how, how long I'll be able to go, but um, wow. I post one seated movement every day just so that a lot of us, I'm here so that we're not leading sedentary lifestyles. We're working at home. We're working at a desk all day. So the workouts can happen at that same desk. If you can sit, you can be fit, right? So mm, Say that uh, again. I like that. If you can say it again. If you can sit, you can be fit. No, really. Um, and so, you know, I, I want to do a lot. I want to get into motivational speaking. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I know eventually... Um, I am working on a 100 rep challenge that's coming maybe in the next 30 days where um, each movement will just do 100 of them for about two weeks. Uh, so that'll be very interesting. And just come and follow me because 
I'm a lot like you. Whatever it is that you feel about the fitness industry, I've felt it too. And if you want a space that you can feel safe and seen and heard and, and not judge no matter who you are and what your background is, then you want to join up with Thickness Fitness. And I'm here to, to you know, link with you. We're going to go together as soon as you join up. All right. Well, there you have it, you guys. Miana Cantati, the Thank founder you. of Thickness Fitness. So you want to be a part of her community. All the links for her uh, platform and how to connect with her will be in the show notes. And thank you for being here, Miana. It's been thank such a pleasure you. to talk to you. And this concludes. Um, and we will definitely, you know, be connecting again soon. But blessings in abundance. Amen. And thank, Amen. You. thank you. Yes.